Hello, welcome back. And here it is, Angular Services, the much awaited Angular service. So let's jump in and see what it's all about. Some of the topics we're gonna cover um, are reusing business logic. Um, that's one of the benefits that using a service give you. Um, of course, you're gonna introduce service, but before that we can talk, what is the business logic? So we have some idea. And then uh, we're not going to try and update the to do application in this video. That was the intent, but then this video is going to run too long already. And so the example that I have to show you, um, Angular service, is long enough and fairly in depth. So I think you're going to see how it easily maps to the to do application. So we'll do update the to uh, to do application in the next video. Review. So far, when we talk about MVC and talk about routes, this is kind of what we, we had in mind. We have routes, and of course those routes are composed of views and templates, sorry, right? You know, we're gonna use view and templates interchangeably. But the controller, and of course the controller is gonna prepare some data for you and present it to your view. Now, let's assume that we're doing an application where we have this forward slash route that's gonna give us like a listing of some items, and we have a new route that allows you to create new items. And we have like an edit route that's going to allow you to edit a particular item where you pass the item ID or something like that, right, that you want to edit. And the idea we we're thinking about is the data or our model is going to be someplace where all of our controllers can access it because, you know, whether we're showing a listing or just creating a new thing, we want the new thing to go and be added to the listing. So that means it must have access to the data where the list is. And if we're going to edit something, it must be able to get something from the list. So the data must be shared across all these controllers. And we talked about this before, and hence one of the reasons why we introduced um, the whole root scope to demonstrate this idea, right? Or we even had a controller that when we first did it before root scope that, you know, we restored that shared model. But this is still a simplified view. If you look at what really happened in practice is that for your model, you might have data stored in a number of different places in a file or a file server. Um, like if you're serving up, you know, if you're Netflix and you're serving up video, that's your data. That's the user data, you know, which video they're going to watch. Um, or you can have stuff stored in a non-SQL type database, um, who's currently logged in and what they're doing. Um, or you can have it stored in a structured database, right, traditional database. Now you don't need to worry about all those type of storage. We, we haven't covered yet. All I want to say is that data could be stored in a number of different places. And those places that are stored, we get it from, we tend to call them more persistent storage. And uh, you might have in your model some adapters, those little um, gray boxes there, are like your adapters to allow you to reach out and grab the data, bring it back from those different types of storage, and make it um, seem unified and everything and in one place for you to be able to use. Okay. So what does the service really buy us? Well, if you look at this picture now, you can see that the service sits between our controller and our model, our data, right? And so the controller is still going to get data and present it to the um, views, you know, but by going through a service, it gives us a single point of encapsulating a number of things. One of them is our business logic, and we'll get back to the business logic in a minute. But it also allows to enforce data integrity. So, for example, imagine that in our to-do application, we don't want to save a to-do without a title because a to-do something to do without no title is just doesn't make any sense, right? So we can put have a service that says add an uh, to-do item um, entry, and then it would check to see if the title is empty, and if it's empty, it would simply not in, in, um, add it to the common store or the current model, right? the model that everybody have access to, and so that's a one way of in forcing the integrity. And now since all our controllers are going through there, every controller that uses the service gets that benefit. And if a service didn't go through, a controller didn't go through a service, it would have to ensure that and hence you have to introduce that logic again. And so that's one place where you can see that how just being able to funnel things through the service makes sense. And like we showed in the previous slide, um, our model can look more uh, complex because we might pull um, different types of data from different places and so if we ever change the structure or what is it that we're representing and how we represent it, if our controller is using that model directly, 
then they all have to change. But if they are going through services, then only a few services have to change. Seems if you have one or many services and you know complex application, you have many services, but you're gonna have many more controllers than you have services. And so you're still gonna be able to um, make this more effective for you by being able to change it one or a few places and have the benefit be gained by many other controllers. And so that's one other advantage. Now, what is the business logic? I've been putting that up. Your business logic is basically the core of the application. What differentiate, differentiate your application from another application? It's all the logic that make your application do the things that uh, makes it unique. And so that those come from the requirement. And those might be things like, um, you're not allowed to add a to-do unless you're logged in. Or if you're logged in as administrator, you can see all the to-dos, things like that, right? All the features and capabilities of your application, those are your business logic. And you don't want to really implement that in controllers. The best place to put that is in a service. And the advantage of that, again, is not only that it makes it easy to reuse, but it... Um, make it so that oh, you can have different type of interfaces. And I don't really mean like different views of the data. I mean, you can have a web application that uses the same service and a um, mobile application that uses the same type of service or anything else, right? So we right now are gonna focus on services that live in our web browser because we're talking about Angular, Angular live in a web browser. But your Angular services can actually be just fronts or proxies for the services that you're gonna have on the back end, and therefore, um, you're gonna still be able to get that kind of benefit. So let's just recap real quickly some of the benefits, and then we're gonna jump into the demo. So it provides a place for you to write reusable business logic. Business logic being the thing that make your application unique. It's the stuff that comes from the requirements. Of course, the requirements that says, your, your application do X, Y, and Z, that's why it's different from somebody else, or it's better, or whatever, or these are the features. It provides persistence across controllers. You will see that oh, once you instantiate, you say a number of controllers is going to use one service, Angular instantiated once for the first controller, and then the exact same service is going to be inserted into all the other controllers. So now this gives you the benefit of what you sort of have when you had a controller that was outside the scope of any root or a root scope, right? Um, because this service is just instantiated once. Um, but it, of course, it can be clean, and you're going to see why. And it provides a sensible place to control access to your model data. By putting this thing, this layer between your controllers and your data, well, like I said, if your data change, it, um, it insulates your controller from having to be updated. So I just told you some things. I want to show you now with demo, and then I'll wrap up again and remind you about some of these things. Right. So let's take a look at our example here. We're going to start off by looking at the um, code for us for sex this section 10 and we look at the HTML. It's no different than what we had before. I changed the name here um, from routing parameters to just say, you know, Angular service, but that's about it and it's running. Um, so there's a live preview there and let's make sure that it works the same way as um, the very last example from section nine. So we can click add, we can add something um, we can click save, it goes into the list. Of course, we can, you know, edit something. We're not gonna click edit, we can go back to the home page, it didn't change, um, but then we can actually update it. And so that seems to work fine. So what then did the service, if visually nothing has changed, what did the service bias? Now we mentioned that oh, there are a number of benefits for service. It helps encapsulate your data, and by having all the controllers go through your service, you have this single point where you can you know, enforce integrity. By that I mean, if a value, something is invalid for um, an object that you want, uh, you want to enforce, like it's some invalid value that you want to make sure it doesn't accept, you can do that. Yes, you can check um, at the form entry point, but maybe you might want to enforce those two um, at the service. Another thing to say, you have multi-user application, like you said. Um, it's possible then you can say, okay, if it's the admin user, I could show all the items in the task list and if it's just this particular user just show them their items or whatever right so allow you to do that sort of thing so let's go take a look then uh, we said nothing really changed here and so obviously nothing really changed here nor the edit form nor the style so the change is really here and to really see what changed it's probably best if we do a diff between um, this current code and the code from the previous example um, 
example three in chapter nine. And so let's start there and then we'll come back to this. And, um, you know, we'll jump over there real quick, but we'll come back. And so if when I compare the app.js file from the previous example, as you can see, is chapter six, section nine, example three, that was the last one we had, and this example one, app.js, we see the first 12 lines are the same, and actually it's more than the 12 lines, but it tells us those lines are the same, that's why it folded them up. And the only difference here starts at line 19, and the difference there is a semicolon. But for our main controller, in the current example we're working with, with service, I only have that the main controller have user X. Whereas before, my main controller had user X, and it's also created, it was using root scope, so it stuck the items on the root scope. But we're getting away from that, because we said that we don't want to keep polluting the root scope. It serves its purpose, we understand that one, that's one of the things you can do with it, but we really don't want to use that. So instead, what I did is I create this function, and it creates a variable um, with it, which holds an array of our items, and I call that app the um, service, right? So I tell Angular, hey, in addition to my controller main at controller, I want to define something called a service, and I give it this name. So it looks very much like a controller. The only difference really is this function that you call on the Angular module, right? And so we call the service one, and how do you define a service? Well, it looks very much like a controller, right? There's a function, um, it has this variable, inter this internal variable, it has this function says called get all items, which when called return all items, which is this. And how do you um, expose that to the outside? Well, you say var and then some object. It doesn't have to be service. I just like use the convention of creating this variable called service, which is an empty object. And one property in that object is the thing you want to expose, which in this case is get item. It's also happened that the property name matches the function name, but it doesn't have to be. But it's going to be this, the, the function call that I'm going to call. Um, this is the function I'm going to use, so I use the same name. But you're going to see at a time I might use different names. And then I return it. So Angular now knows that of this service is defined. And when you're ready to use it, Angular creates an instance of this function, runs it, and get this, um, re gets the return, a reference to this object with all these properties, whatever you might have defined. In our example, it's just one. And it's a, it's when you call this, use this object and call this function, you'll get a copy of, um, you get a reference to these items. And so that's really the only difference up here is like splitting out this from being inside of main controller to putting it in this thing we call a service. And we also mentioned, and we're gonna keep talking about the different benefits of services. Now, how do you use a service? Well, for my list controller, I want to have access to these items, right? To be able to show in the list. So now I can have that service injected and I just use the service name that I told Angular here and I put it here, and Angular looks at my controller when I'm defining it and says, oh, you expect an instance of item DB service, so I'll give you that. So it instantiates this and gives me an instance of it. And of course, I can say item DB service, this name uh, that I inject, that get items, which is this. And of course, this has reference to this function, and this function returns that. So I get a list of items, I can put it on my scope, and my list controller works just the same. What about when I want to add something? Again, I didn't have to change any of the source code. Here in my add items controller, instead of taking a scope, as you can see, that's where it's different, I replace the root scope with the item DB, not scope, root scope. So I replace root scope with the item DB service, because that's where my items are. And I just do item DB service that get all the item. And then when I get that reference to that, I can push the new item onto it. All right. Um, similarly with the edit, looks pretty much the same. Again, root scope replaced with item DB service. And I would want to get a copy. I want Angular to make a copy of the item DB service that get items and then the one that I want selected. I'm still using the idea of an index. Okay. And so we're going to get away from index in the next section, but for now we're still using this idea of an index. And so now you can see when I ready to update, Again, I get all the items and I update that particular one. Again, not a big change. If you really look at it, it's replacing scope with, with you know, this call to the DB service to get the items. And I could have stored that in a variable if I wanted to and reuse the variable name, but I really wanted to keep 
the lines easy for you to see the change, right? Of course, you can imagine that how you store things in a variable for us and then use it. Um, and that's irrelevant. The code still works the same way. Uh, the big change is really is just adding this service, which just kind of factor out um, this thing. Now, one of the advantages is, besides the other thing we've mentioned, is that I like Angular creating an instance of this function only once. So know that as you use it across multiple controllers, you don't have to worry about it. Again, when we use it here, we didn't have to worry about it because that variable was up in this main controller, which was, you know, um, outside of any um, route. But as you could see, we are putting this thing here and it's inside of controller. It doesn't give us the nice level of control as we're going to see as we start playing with this that you get from this. We can imagine that oh, we, we add a function here called add items. And so here, instead of just accessing the push on the element directly on this array um, um, object, we can just call, we can call DB server that add item and it would check and verify that the item we want to push meets whatever criteria um, or business requires. And so that's where our business logic come in, right? That's enforcing business logic. And we can verify that and um, if you want to do edit, again, we can enforce some kind of integrity before we just blindly push things there. But the way this is now, if somebody deletes, let's say we say, oh, I'm going to edit this and then I'm going to delete everything. And I say update. You see, that's not really a valid to do, is it? All right. And so, uh, well, not to do, sorry. And that's not really a valid item. If the item is blank, there's nothing there. You might as well have deleted it, right? But uh, even with a to-do application, you would still have the same problem where you could erase the, disk, the title and save it, and that would accept that. That's not really a valid to-do. So we're going to see how we're going to be able to enforce those kind of checks um, and make sure that things like that doesn't happen. All right, so now that's the difference. Let's look at the difference. Uh, let's go back here. And so I hope by now you see sort of um, how we start moving in the direction of writing better and more robust applications with being able to use capabilities like a service. Okay, so I'm gonna keep this video a little short. In the very next video, I'm we're going to use everything we've learned so far, which is roads, parameters, and services. Those are the three main ideas that we used in the past three or four videos. And we're gonna go back and take our to-do application, which we left off in section six here, and we're going to start with that and add those, these same items. In. But we'll see that in the next video. For now, just try to get the basic concept of a service. And you can have multiple services, or you can have multiple controllers. We can have multiple services, and you can insert them you know, into your controllers. It can depend on service one, service two, service X, whatever. You can even have service depend on other service. So it's very, very, very flexible. And we'll see examples of those as we move along. All right, so let's wrap up. So we got to play with um, services in this episode, and I hope the example really um, shows you how easy it is to use and how potentially powerful it can be. And so the key things, some key things to remember, they just get instantiated once or they get created once, not, on, not like controller. Everything you visit the new route, a new that controller is recreated, hence why you can't hang on to the data. But with a service, because it's instantiated once, once it creates some data or you put some data in there, all the controls are using it so the service persists across the, the controllers. Of course, if you refresh your application, that's a different thing. Uh, we haven't gotten to that point yet how to actually persist our data across refreshing the application or rules, bringing it up in another browser and that sort of thing. And again, um, another thing is just it's just a function that returns an object. And that object, um, you know, because it's an object, it can have keys on it and those keys can be to function or values and because the way Angular does it is when it instantiates a service basically run that function get that object that it returns and that is what it passes into other controllers now uh, if that's a little bit too complex for you um, there's another section I'm going to be talking about more services I'm going to show how we can update our to-do application we'll get away from service and then we're going to come probably come back to it um, but don't worry, you will see, I have more opportunities to see services in use. So thanks for your time. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learned something new. I hope you're excited about services and, you know, see you in the next video. Again, subscribe, tell your friends, spread the word. See you. Bye.